So today we are going to discuss about something called manage services and the delays. Manage services and delays. In this chapter, we will see what is your service and uh, we also observe how to manage it. This is the other because the coming units are about to install the packages and uh, start the service, stop the service, enable it, disable it. So that is uh, next we are going to do solve. That's why before doing installation of the package and uh, start the services, first we we'll see what is the service and how to start. Like management is nothing but start a service, uh, stop the service, enable a service, disable a service. So this is what we are called managing services. So this is what we are in this chapter. So we will do this. We'll, this is not uh, a lengthy topic. Uh, it is a small one. So we can complete it uh, within, within our time. So we will see now what is the service first of all. Service, we call everything is a service. Like uh, if we are getting any help, uh, we call this a service. And from whom we are getting the service, that person is a service provider. That person is the service provider and we are, we are we are clients accessing the service. So the service may available free or uh, like price based. Maybe it may be price based or free of cost. But the service is available by some sources. And we are going to access the services when we are authorized to access. Then we are privileged to access the service, we can access the service, whatever it is, in general. Here also, a service means, we can say, it's providing something to clients. So, service which provides uh, resources to clients, you can say, which provides Resources to plan to So, in general, we can say Chinese is nothing but we can say it's a uh, it's like help, like uh, we are going to provide, uh, it may be, it may be, we may, may provide time, web pages, or uh, IP addresses, or reservation, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, available to, to clients, available to clients, available to clients, and uh, the one who did this, like, uh, who is going to share the files? Who is going to share the web pages, IP addresses, resolutions? We call it as a server. And the clients who are going to access the service from the server, that may be a file service, web page service, and whatever it may be. So the client is going to access the service from the server. So in our case, in our case, a service may have Dependency. Dependency. Service may have dependency. For example, for example, let us say HTTPD is a service actually. It depends on depends on network service. Network service. So if we have network service, then only we can work with HTTPD service. So dependency. It's a dependency like. Network also is service, HTTP also service. Two services are working together. When where HTTP is depending on network service, the dependency. And also we take one more example like uh, NFS. NFS. It's going to share files. It's going to share files. NFS service. And depends. It depends on. It depends on uh, mounted. A service called Mountedy 
uh, it is used to mount the shared file, shared file and also RPC bind is also a dependency parameter and also uh, stat day, lock day, there are other dependencies also and uh, stat day, lock day, like, these are all dependencies for NSS service. That means when NSS service is going to work, these all depending services are also going to be started automatically. Like when you are working with NSS, the back end, Lockery, Chatity, RPG Bind, Monkery, for every Lockery is having a task, like it locks the files. Then one user opens the files, it is not available for other users. The file is locked for that user. Lockery service. Chatity, it shows the status of the NFS service. Remote procedure call, like uh, NFS is a RPC service. Remote procedure call, like whatever service. Uh, queries comes from the client, the queries comes through RPC service, RPC bind service. Like uh, every service is having a task, all the services works together, we call NFS service, enable service. So enable service means like these all are working together. We can say these all dependencies for NFS service. We can see here mount D, D for daemon. RPC bind, lock D, stat D here, daemon. RPC bind is not ending with D here, but most of the times these are ending with D here, lock D, stat D. So, because in Linux, in Linux, services are, services are called daemons. So, here you can say services and daemons, the chapter is service and daemons. If Linux, if in Linux every service is called as a daemon, then why they are given separately service and a daemon? If service is a daemon, then why they are given again service and daemon? Because the reason is like the daemon may work as a dependency for a service. A daemon may work as a dependency for a service. Like NFS is a service and it uh, is going to work using these demons. Like you can say, demon is a dependency for a service. So there is a small difference between service and demon. There is a small difference. Demon is a dependency for a service. Again, demon also a service. Charity also is doing a task. Lockery is also doing a task. What is the Lockery doing? It is going to launch the file inaccessible for other users. It is going to launch the files. It is also providing a task. It is doing a task. It is also a service. Every daemon is a service and also it's a dependency for one more service. Mm -hmm. So small difference. Small difference. Every daemon is a service. At the same time, it may be a dependency for another service. Like we observed yesterday, PID. Every process may have a child process. Child process is also process, parent process also process. Here, child also, you can say, child also a process. Child also a process, parent also a process. Child also a service, parent also a service. But this child provides, like uh, this parent depends on this child. If log B works, then only anything works. Log is a dependency for an dependency service. Every dependency service we call as a daemon. So demons are dependencies. You can say demons are dependencies. Demons may be dependencies. The dependencies for other service. So, we can say every daemon like RPC bind, stat D, daemon, every daemon is a service at the same time it is a dependency for one more service. Okay, so this is uh, what actually a service and daemon. 
like uh, what is the service and what is the thing like uh, now we will come to this management so why we are going to observe this chapter why should we observe this unit now because as an administrator it is our role to check monitor what services are running and sometimes we need to restart them we need to stop them do maintenance again start it enable it disable it this is our task so that's why we are going to observe this this topic we are going to observe like how to manage services we are going to observe so let us say i am going to install a package called let me say i am going to install a package called httpd i am going to install so whenever we install it a package what is going to happen it is going to create configuration files and uh, log files under under where log files it is going to create and also under usr under usr it is going to create some libraries at the same time under usr itself it is going to under lists like libraries we get something like system b system under which we may get something like http dot service it gets service script so as of now we are not going to observe the configuration files we will observe later log files we are not observing now we will do later but we will observe this now library file there is a library file called http dot service which is there to start stop enable disable service so this file is very important if you want to start stop enable disable any service because this service here having something called http dot service is a script the service script uh, in which something is written like how to start a service stop a service enable it how to disable it something is written here in this script so if you have the script then only we can do this task otherwise we can't do so if we have here if you have here this file then this command works system ctl start http will work this command works if you have the file here system ctl what is actually system system ctl is a tool is a tool which is used to start a service manually manually like a uh, manually uh when like after after boot after boot after boot means this machine is already booted this machine is running machine it's already booted so system ctl is used after boot only like when the machine is running then only we are going to use the command to start a service stop a service start a service stop a service enable service disable with this all we are going to do with system ctl command so i am going to start it here by saying system ctl start http i am going to do like i am starting the service so what happens when we uh, start a service immediately we know that when we start a service the port is open the port is going to be open means it starts listening the port is open means it starts listening request from client so whatever request comes it starts listening and starts answering the request if port is open and the command system ctl if you use system ctl so ctpd again port is closed the port is closed after doing this port is closed port is closed means service is not available to the clients so in case you want to do maintenance stop it do it and again start it so when we start it it's ready for the clients so when we start the service when the configuration is done when log files are created and also when web pages are ready the http is the web server if the web pages are ready when everything is ready we are going to start the service means we are going to make it available to the clients and we are going to stop sometimes if a client has 
uh, if you are doing uh, some maintenance and the uh, client cannot access to the port is closed when we stop the service so this is what how we start and stop the service but why should we enable it there is a command called system ctl enable HTTP. so why should we enable it for next reboot for next reboot reboot service if to be available we want if the service to be available for the next reboot also because uh, if we start the service it is available for this instance only if we reboot what happens at the when we say reboot it is going to shut down by shutting down it will stop all the process it will close all the ports it will bring the machine down and when the machine comes up again it has to start the services which we want which we want so that we are telling by this command like i want this service in the next reboot also this command will tell system ctl enable http means we are telling that we want the service in the next reboot also but who is going to start in the next reboot there is a program we all of the last time system b is going to start it whatever you we enable system b will observe in this path this the etc system b system there is a folder multi user dot target dot one there is a folder in this folder HTTP dot service will come automatically. This is a link file. This is a link file. This is a link file. Actually, this is the original file. This is the original file, and this is a link file. So this link file is created once we execute this command. After executing this command, this link is created. If the link is created, system D will check it in the next reboot system d will check in, the, in this path etc system the system multi user dot target at once what is there hdbd service is there ftp service is there nfx is there and uh, samba is there system d will start all the one by one one two three four like system d will start them in the next reboots so whatever we enable that comes here and are going to be started in the next reboot by system so while we understand that system d ctl is starting the services and system d also starting the services but system d ctl is starting at the run time system d is starting at the boot time so system d is starting the services at the boot time system ctl will start at the run time yeah man we are using manually system system ctl start start the system ctl stop the same way if we enable it is started if we disable it is not started system ctl if we say disable hdpd this link will go this link will go so system d cannot start it in the next reboot that is what disabling the service so disabling for the next reboots enable for the next reboot so this is what uh, we call the uh, service um service management like uh, we have what is the service and how to manage them uh, we should also something more about this services practically 